I'm Christina Suter and I have invested in over $50 million in real estate assets over 35 years. And I have been investing over those 35 years. One of the primary lessons I've learned is all ships rise and fall on the tide. And that tide is called the economy. Let's take a deep look here. All right. What did we have? We had the great recession in 2007, 2008 and 9 in 2012. I, what we also have seen is a housing bubble. What I want to talk about now is, are we heading into another recession at this moment or not? And what does that mean to real estate? Is the recessions we've seen in the past. There have been eight recessions that I specifically want to track, and I'm going to track those in six chunks because some of the recessions are so close together that effectively they're one real estate cycle. This is the first set that I want to talk about. You can see in 1969, 1974, and 1979, we had recessions. 1974, 1981, we had recessions, but what did it mean to real estate prices? 1969, what did that recession mean? It meant that the upturn lasted from 1963 to 1969. That was seven years, guys. And then the downturn, was basically a year and a half. When, how much did real estate go down by? 14%. But I also want you to notice, real estate didn't hit its bottom until we were in the recession. 1974, let's look at that particular recession. The upturn lasted from 1971 to 1975-ish. It was about four years. The downturn was so not a downturn that even though you would say it went from quarter one to quarter three of 1975, it didn't actually go down. It actually went up. The real estate market went up by 14.7% in 1974 during that recession. And in 1979, 1981, there were two recessions and they effectively, the way they affected real estate is they act more as a single cycle. I want you to notice, you see that the, that the top, of real estate in 1979 is actually about the same height than the bottom of that cycle when it hit in 1982. So was there a real loss in that two and a half years of real estate? No, actually the total from the top of the cycle in 1979 to the bottom of the cycle in 1981, there was actually an increase of 2.6%. Does real estate always go down? No, it doesn't. Economic cycles can happen and real estate itself may not be affected. Let's look at the federal funds rate because that's really what we're focused on these days is the federal fund rate. And what does it mean to real estate? You will see in 1975, the federal funds rate hit its peak and then the Fed started to decrease. But what did that mean to real estate? Real estate still didn't hit its quote unquote dip which wasn't even really a bottom until 1976. That is about a year after the Fed stopped, decreased, started decreasing rates. Let's look at that longer cycle I talked about in 1980s. So in 1979, Fed started increasing rates and it peaked its increase in 1980 when, oops, sorry guys, where the economy has not slowed down enough, we're going to do this again. And they increased rates in 1981 and whoops, guess what? It still wasn't enough when they started decreasing rates a little too soon. And there was this peak in 19, late in 1981 was the third peak. What did that do to real estate? Well, if you look at it, real estate itself, because of the strength of the economy, the strength of the economy, which the Fed keeps talking about, real estate itself did not go down until almost longer than a year later. It took literally from 1981, late 1981, when they started decreasing rates, it took another year and a little bit for the real estate market to, slow, to show a a noticeable downturn that actually affected prices. That's just one set of recessions. Let's look at a second set of recessions. So you can see here that in 1990, we had a recession. 
it's we had an upturn from 1984 to 1992 1991 that is seven years guys and then our downturn was one year long and we lost eight percent 2001 we had our upturn from 1991 to 20 2001 that's about 10 years when people say real estate is a seven to ten year cycle now you know why the upturn was about 10 years our downturn was about six months but we did lose 4.8 percent but then there's the big one 2007 that one should be talked about almost by itself but let's follow the same dynamic in 2007 what did we see we saw there was an upturn from 2001 to 2007 that was seven years but when we started going down we went down for five years the longest downturn in all of the cycles i have covered so far in the six cycles i've covered this one was five years long the other ones were minor some didn't show a downturn at all so five years negative 23 percent total and you can see between the height of real estate until the end of that particular time period that there was a distinct movement of real estate going down during the recession and then stayed down and it went almost sideways if you look at the bottom of the at the bottom of the market and then another dip sideways over that longer period of time of almost three years and it was a norm it's kind of odd that it went sideways it didn't even try to increase at all and it continued to be to be volatile that period is unusual but it still happened but it was the biggest strongest downturn what was it about that one well guys it wasn't it was the fact that the actual trigger for the recession itself resided in real estate in the dot-com bust in 2000 the 2001 downturn the recession that was literally the dot-com bust that one was specifically specifically that one was specifically inside of literally the stock market and real estate was a secondary fallout and again it was a six month fallout at point or negative 4.8 percent it was not primary the actual downturn was created in 2006 and 7 was down created from real estate loans itself and it hit the real estate market the hardest now let's look what effect did the federal funds rate have because that's the big question that everybody is tracking right now so in these markets you can see in 1979 1980 fed increased rates but it, the height of that was in 1979 how much later before we see what is the bottom or the big dip in real estate prices it was a little less than a year later it was about nine months later in the next cycle in the dot-com bust in 2000 the fed increased rates it increased rates more than once but it increased rates and it held the rates for a little longer where do we see the biggest quote unquote downturn in real estate where real estate seems to go up again it was nine it was actually a year later in when we saw the real estate market go down and then actually go up and down go up and down but it started a trajectory of what was clearly the beginning of a cycle and in 2000 to sorry 2006 2007 when the economy was so hot that the federal reserve increased rates and held those rates for over six months you and that was the big downturn in real estate it took almost a year and a half to two years before we saw what was the slide from the top of the market down to the bottom of the market between the fed funds rate stopping their decrease and holding for six months we saw almost a year and a half before real estate hit its bottom so what does that mean to you as an investor we've just now looked at eight eight recessions six real estate cycles and we have looked at the fact that bottom line the federal funds rate the time that it starts to increase is not what starts to is not what is the bottom of the real estate market 
even more important, when the Fed stops decreasing rates, starts, sorry, stops increasing rates and actually decreases rates is also not the bottom of the real estate market. The actual bottom of the real estate market is anywhere from nine months to a year. We're not going to see 2007 again, right in this cycle, guys. So anywhere from nine months to a year after the Fed hits its balance rate increase and either holds or decreases. So we have nine months to a year of continuing effect here on the real estate market of potential softening. This is why I keep telling you guys, this is the buy-in window. This is the time when I want you out looking because there are enough professional investors out there that within the six to nine month or year long period, prices are going to start going up again because the good money that has been sitting on the side is ready to start investing and has been waiting to be able to see when the market is going to hit its bottom so that it can start slooping it up. I am Christina Suter, your real estate investment advisor. I want to help you find your real purpose through the vehicle of real estate. Let's build your wealth intentionally and consciously. DM me for a strategy session. Christina Suter, real estate investor and life purpose coach.